the tragedy at Sandy Hook has brought up a debate within the country about new laws on gun control and Obama is pushing for it very hardcore. Well, let's take a look at some of the facts and there are many. This particular site is filled with a lot of information for you. And here you can see 300 million firearms owned by civilians as of 2010, 100 million are handguns, percentage of households with a gun, the adults owning, owning handguns, <clears throat> the males predominantly hold more, and apparently the Republicans. The main reason is kind of split between protection against crime and target shooting. And hunting is not too far behind. 16,000 murders committed during 2008. 67% were with firearms. Eighty-two survey of male felons dispersed across the U.S. found 34% had been scared off, shot at, wounded, or captured by an armed victim. 40% decided not to commit a crime because they knew or believed the victim was carrying a gun. 69% personally knew other criminals who had been scared off, shot at, wounded, or captured by an armed victim. Eighty-three percent of Americans will be the victim of an attempted or completed violent crime. Forty-two percent of Americans will be the victim of a completed violent crime in the course of their lives. I'm just going to scan through some stuff here. <clears throat> this is your graph from 2008. We're showing the murder rates in Washington, which they had passed the law from possessing guns, and your private homes had to kept be unloaded, had trigger locks, and on 08 they struck the law down. Well, you can see the graph here, the pink, would show you the black is the city of Washington, the pink is the whole country. And you can see the ban and the trigger lock law becomes effective. The graph goes way up. Ban and trigger law is struck down. The graph goes way down. And we're going to talk about England and Wales. This talks about Britain. In 97, they had a little law requiring the surrender of all their privately owned handguns to the cops. And this was their gun control law here. And you see the graph keeps going up, up, up when the people are disarmed. Homicides here. And then it went way up. This is Chicago murder rates for the U.S. Handgun ban became effective here. Drops down a little bit and goes way up and it starts to come down some. Supreme Court overturned DC's handgun ban in 08. So, this is the United States level right here. So, that was much higher than the US level. 
can see how it's set of the handset gun, the murder rate average 17% lower than it was before the law took effect. U.S. murder rate average 25% lower. There's a ton of information here you can go through. I will put the link up because there's a lot of thought that should be put into new laws. It's a tragedy what happened. We'll probably never really know the truth about everything. Could it have been MK Ultra type deal? Gwen Tower type deal? Could have been, but we'll never know. Or the boy could have just had a bad gene and a chip on his shoulder about something and, and went off. Discrepancies range between 26 and 28, but that's only because they didn't count his mother and him. So that's why you kept hearing 26, 27, and 28. 26 people at the school he counts and his mom counts and that many 28. come down here to Texas, the murder rate in Texas and the U.S. Black is Texas. U.S. is over here. And a right to carry law become effective here. And once people started packing, the thing came way down. The bad guy knows you got something. The bad guy thinks twice. He looks for people that are prey. Prey. Michigan right to law <clears throat> to carry law becomes effective. Things start going down. Along with the overall US rate. Six hundred and thirteen fatal firearm accidents in 07, which was one half of one percent of the total amount of that year. If your graph of the age groups, then you can see this age group had more. even though it was only a portion of, of 1.0 these two were 2.1 so before we start deciding to say yeah let's go ahead and limit the amount of bullets in the clip let's go ahead and do away with an assault rifle That doesn't necessarily mean that anything's going to be cut down. I mean, what about the Chinese incident? I believe it was China, where the man went in there and cut 22, 22 children, I believe, with a knife. If you want to kill, you're going to find a way. If a gun's not available, you're going to think of something else. Oh, it might be a little tougher. But you're just going to put a little more thought and a little more effort into it. So I think the guns were owned legally by the boy's mother. It's not like he purchased them illegally. It's not like he stole them. Uh, they seem to have been stored properly. It just appears to be an unfortunate incident. Even though he took so many innocent children's lives. 
it doesn't appear to be something that's going on everywhere. I mean, we did have the Aurora, Colorado deal. And when they're in quantities of, of so many people, it makes that one single incident look so much worse because it alters so many people's lives. It took the children of the mothers and fathers. It took the they were somebody's brother and sister and grandchildren and nieces and nephews. They may have grown up and had children of their own, so there were generations that disappeared. Well, that is a severe tragedy. But we're really going to have to do some soul searching here because it may not prevent anything. Like I say, if the demand's there, the bad guy's going to get what he wants because he hangs around scum. And scum hangs around a black market. Scum will go to the sporting goods store and rip them off. They'll break into your house and steal what you've got, and then they'll have it, and you'll have nothing. And then it'll be a little harder for you to acquire one, or a little harder for you to acquire the ammunition. Bad guys are always going to get the stuff they need. That's why they're bad guys. They know how to do the bad things. They know where to get them. Dope addicts know where to go get the dope, don't they? Even though it's against the law, they can still get it. Smugglers will provide what the law does not allow. And if you want an assault rifle, the price will just go up. Somebody that knows how to get it will get it for you. That's the way it'll end up working. On the other flip side of the coin, if you ever did have to defend yourself against uh, uh, some kind of a takeover, you know, a government type of a deal, well then they'd have all the access to the automatics. They pull the trigger one time and a whole bunch of bullets fly. You left with your pull the trigger one time to fire one bullet, you're severely outmanned. All this needs to go into the thought process. For me, in a situation like this, where the boy didn't buy the handgun, there's not a whole lot you could do. It's just like your son, your daughter took your gun. You know, there was no background check done on them because they didn't buy a, a gun. The Aurora shooter, well, maybe he had a little something that could have been found out to where he couldn't have got what he got. And then we get into the wild stuff about MK Ultra type mine implantation suggestions, you know, trigger words. And they can do things like that. I'm not saying this is one. But what I am saying is Obama, it is just really weird that he's wanted all this stuff for a while. And he gets reelected. And then, boom. You know, you can just come over here and read all this information and put it down in numbers. And look at the numbers as a whole. These numbers usually tell the truth. But I think we're going to get ourselves in a whole lot of a whole lot more of a hole if we end up making it severely harder for us to acquire weaponry that we want and that we desire and we feel that we need. So think about it. I'll talk to you soon.